let's bring on a very big market opinion. Mark Faber, editor and publisher, the Gloom, Boom and Doom report. He joins in from Singapore. Dr. Faber, hi, morning. Now, you said that equities will fall. We saw some correction. Do you see more pain? Well, basically, uh, my sense is that we had a very strong bull market last year and uh, that the market is now essentially fully priced. Now, this doesn't mean that there aren't here and there stocks that can still go up. In general, in the world, I believe that we are moving into an environment where indices do not perform particularly well because of their elevated level, but that uh, it's a stock picker's market where some stocks still offer some attraction. Sensex have dropping to 24,000 on multiple factors. Uh, this is something that you had spoken about earlier. Do you still hold that view? Yes, uh, I think it will also depend on global markets, but in general, we had this huge move to essentially 30,000, and now we can correct, uh, say, 30% from the highs. And some stocks have already corrected quite a lot. So I wouldn't be surprised to see 24,000. Right, uh, Mark, uh, the biggest uh, global trigger or the turning point for global uh, markets would be the Fed move. So what is your take on when Fed will actually move? Personally, given the weakness in the economy and against all expectations by these great economists in the U.S., the U.S. economy has actually been decelerating over the last six months. Given this weakness and uh, the backup in yield, I doubt that the Fed will increase rates this year. I think for the full year, uh, rates will essentially stay where they are. And furthermore, I would not be surprised if at some point they would initiate another asset purchase program, in other words, QE4. Well, Greece, uh, the issue is very, very delicate now. They are coming out and saying that they will default in June if they are not given any aid from lenders. They've been given some bit of ultimatum as well. How do you see the whole issue panning out? Well, first of all, I have to say, if I were Greece, I would do exactly as they have done. I would say we are bankrupt. We cannot pay these debts. The bailout in 2010, 2011 was not the bailout of Greece, but was a bailout of European banks. And now uh, the Europeans want to basically bail out the ECP that holds a lot of Greek debt. The Greek economy cannot support the over $300 billion of debt that they accumulated with the help, well understood, with the help of the other European countries, uh, these states that were accumulated. So we can kick the can down the road by giving them, uh, essentially by paying the European banks and the ECB money, which freshly borrowed money, but it doesn't help the Greek economy. And the Greek economy, as it is in the current environment, cannot pay the interest on its debt and will never be able to repay the debt, never, ever. So I would say the Greek situation is uh, economically not solvable, but, and that's the big but, you have to see uh, the Eurozone is politically very close to the U.S. and under no circumstances do the hardliners in the U.S. and also some hardliners in Europe want to see Greece leave the EU because the next ones to knock on their doors would be the Russians or the Chinese and that would be undesirable for the West. So it's more a political issue than an economic issue. Dr. Papa, let's chat about India because in India the Modi government has now completed its one year. Um, are you happy with the reform processes so far because you expect the investment cycle as well to pick up soon? Well, basically, the problem is that uh, India is a democracy 
and uh, Modi does not have the absolute power uh, such as say Xi Jinping would have in China so he has to deal with Congress and opposition parties and there are reforms that he wanted to introduce and implement which were turned down so if you ask me I'm happy I'm happy with the willingness of Modi to actually reform the system. I'm unhappy with the results so far. Marcus, the Bank of India these days, do you think there is room for more capital demand continues to be weak? Well, the Indian economy, as you know, industrial production in uh, March was up less than 3%, which is very low. Uh, my view is yes he will probably lower rates over time but he i think the key for him and uh, for the indian system is credibility and uh, the stability of the currency so he will probably lower rates but at a, a slow pace all right Pastor, thanks so much for joining in today and giving us your views <laughs>